Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters uh, uh, last week. I'm only just getting to it now. Sorry. The Witch is a horror movie unlike any other in recent memory. A slow-paced, moody family drama that touches on serious themes and takes its ever-loving time establishing a sense of place, almost to the point that you feel bored as if there's nothing really going on. But be patient. It's all necessary. In short, it's a subtle sort of horror. It's not the type of horror movie that affects you only within the confines of the theater. No, this baby's gonna go home with you, and it will linger and it will inspire discussion. And it's only through that discussion, or personal reflection, if you don't have anybody to talk about it with, that you may realize the brilliance of just what was accomplished here. The movie is slow, simple, and methodical, and builds its story with a gradual sense of fear and dread. As a result, it may alienate the impatient. I mean, there may be stretches of this movie, long stretches where you think, I, I don't like this movie, man. Where's it going? As a result, it may alienate the impatient or those looking for just heart-pounding thrills. There may be long stretches of this movie where you just don't like it, but for those who like to dig into material that challenges them, who like to interpret and discuss, for those who prefer their chills to be more realistic, more ground level, more human, well, The Witch is just the feast you've been looking for. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. The Witch begins with promise. Set in the barely settled New England wilderness in the 1600s, the story follows a very religious family as they are cast out of their plantation for heresy and try to build themselves a new life in the unsettled wilderness alone. They build themselves a homestead on the edge of a forest and attempt to live off the land with their strict adherence to scripture to guide them. But it quickly becomes clear that they never really had a chance because something evil lives in those woods, and it will slowly and methodically tear this family apart. Emphasis on the word slowly. First thing, right off the bat, we, the audience, are told up front that the threat is real. So we know that this isn't gonna be some kind of twist ending, like, oh, it was all in their heads, and that the evils and terrors come from the devil within or some crap. A few months after settling, building their home, and beginning to farm, there's a new baby boy born to this unnamed family. And one day, while big sister Thomason is playing peekaboo with him, the baby boy disappears. And we see him carried through the woods by uh, something female. That's all I can really say. And we see what the family doesn't see. We get horrifying confirmation that there is evil surrounding this increasingly pious family. And then, after that scene, we watch and wait for the other shoe to drop. And wait, and wait, and wait some more until when the end game of the story plays out, and the movie is really only an hour and a half long. It doesn't take long. When the end game of the story plays out and refreshingly in the least subtle way possible, you may find yourself staring open mouthed at the screen in shock. Probably the best thing I can say about The Witch is that it is very effective at creating a sense of place, time, and character. This cast delivers incredibly nuanced and effective performances, speaking in a sort of elevated old English that takes a while to catch on to. I even struggled in vain to make out certain passages of dialogue and just let it go. But it's all part of the aesthetic. The photography, the production design, the performances, the dialogue. You will be transported, that's for sure. But there may be stretches of the movie where you ask yourself, okay, I've been transported here effectively, now what? This is where the reflection and group discussion comes in. I found myself seeing this movie with a friend and having a drink afterwards, we began our conversation kind of mystified, like we were trying to figure out just what we saw. And we were bringing so much to the table in terms of analysis. Is this an allegory for sin, hypocrisy, feminism? Is this, was this symbolic of that? It, why did certain things happen at the certain place and time that they did? And did one cause the other? And we both realized two things eventually. One, all these things were coming from us, not from the film. And two, the film is sort of constructed in a way to make it 
open to all those interpretations of its themes because of its long, boring passages in the middle where nothing really appears to be happening, but afterwards you can see they were laying pipe, sprinkling clues or hints that you can either pick up and use or discard as you see fit. And when I say that it's open to interpretation, I'm not trying to say that it's all ambiguous. The ending makes it very clear what is real and what is not and what the resolution of the story is. I am saying that this movie is gonna make you work for it. Oh, and it's gonna creep you the F out as well. One thing that will help in this regard is that it takes place at a time period and setting that very few of us are familiar with. So unlike, say, Jaws or Piranha, which really made me afraid to go swimming, there's nothing here that's gonna interfere with your daily life. You know, unless you work around goats, or chop wood a lot, or hunt with a musket. In which case, hey, good luck getting to sleep tonight. I went back and forth on this a bit, but I ended up awarding the witch a large bag of popcorn because there is just so much intriguing stuff to chew on here. At various points, I considered it a slow, boring, even tedious, but by the end of the film, it has, and please forgive me for this, the witch cast its spell on me. <sighs> I'm sorry. And while I can't say that I walked out completely entertained, more like baffled or mystified, the witch has lingered with me in the hours and days since. It's a horror movie in a different gear than you're used to. Heck, with the exception of a few specific scenes, it actually plays like a period family drama, and its realistic nature only makes the gradual but unavoidable confrontation with pure evil all the more potent. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And also click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos and more importantly, click subscribe so we can keep doing what we do. In the meantime, leave your comments below and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. Thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and I want to live deliciously. Do you want to live deliciously?